while I eat ramen, I figured I would talk about the Cyberpunk 2077 stuff and what I think of it. It's just insane. I don't... I, it's not... Uh, this is not a hot take. If you listen to any podcast about video games, you'll hear the same thing. Ha, they... CD Projekt Red is a studio that w is... Before the release of this video game, was generally beloved. Because they kind of made niche-like fantasy medieval games with the Witcher series and they supported them really well and they had great updates that made them way better. The first game was kind of eh and buggy a little bit. Second game was a step up, right? Third game was a step up from there, right? And the third game did really well for them. It sold super well. It kind of like put them on the map with all gamers, you know? I would say one and after one they were still like a little bit of a smaller studio. Um, they are, they've always had issues with bugs when they release. I would agree with that, Norfair. I thought they were always buggy when it released. Yeah, I mean, generally speaking. But Witcher 3, when it came out, was pretty solid. It was more solid than 2. I heard that they actually did put out a patch after a while that just completely changed how the movement in the game worked. <laughs> which is wild. But it, it functioned better than the predecessor, right? At some point, I don't know when... They became a publicly traded company, and they have investors. Um, and when that happens, you have you get deadlines from those people. And, you know, the studio that was releasing games on their own timelines, and when they thought the games were more ready and stuff, then they have to transfer transfer into, you know, like a more like a publicly traded studio would be would be work worked right like you your deadlines are set by investors who want a game released by this holiday season uh because of all these other factors that they are taking into account and as a game developer if you're not publicly traded you're thinking about those things too but when your investment investors are telling you you have to do this you have to do that right um so they they grew a lot they got a lot of popularity, they became publicly traded, a lot of stuff changed between the release of The Witcher 3 and Cyberpunk 2077. But what didn't change was like public perception of them. It was, you know, like this is a great company, they are going to put out a product they really care about, they're not going to release something kind of shitty, right? So I think everybody had, you know, expectations that they were not going to screw over the gamer. <laughs> and that they would treat their product well because that's what they had done in the past you know they had taken their time with it and made sure it released at least in a relatively working state and um you know that's why would they not do that this time they want people to like their video games they care about us the gamers so why wouldn't they um and I mean, ever, I don't need to talk about what's just happened. We've all been fought. Everybody knows what's just happened, right? <laughs> You've seen the things, you know, uh, with the console versions of those games and even the PC version, which works. It's still not great. Um, so I don't know. It's a really crazy... Um, it's, a, it's an insane kind of arc between, you know, being extremely popular and revered and loved by the video game community and then like you've done us so wrong you have wronged the gamers like how could you do this to a cd project red why um i don't know i i was trying to they talked about this on a podcast i was listening to is this the worst turnaround between one game's release in terms of public opinion of that company and it might be. I was trying to think of other companies where after a game was released, the public opinion of them went completely in the shitter. I would argue Bioware between the release of Mass Effect 3 and then... But even Bioware, they put out Andromeda, which was kind of... Right? Maybe that... Maybe Bioware is comparable. And then Anthem, which was... Right? Maybe Bioware. Bioware was beloved, right? The Mass Effect series, people fucking adore. They jerk off to that shit. They have sex with the NPCs, IRL. I don't know. I It's it's truly fascinating to see the arc of CD Projekt here. And, like, what are they going to do next? I 
they have to do right by their audience or they're just not gonna i hold on i get my ramen i'll keep talking about this when i get back but i don't know they gotta do something bethesda after fallout 76 i don't even know if i would uh, i would attribute to the same level of the same kind of drop nor fair and my argument is is that bethesda for a while has released trash to be completely honest fallout 4 when it came out was a mess fallout 3 when it came out was a mess a lot of different bethesda games have released in a state that's like this is janky maybe fall maybe fallout 76 was the the straw that co broke the camel's back but i feel like the dis i think you're you're not off i think you're kind of on point with that but it's kind of like been a stable like eh, you know like up and down public perception of bethesda over time right where like it was never so high and then so like i would say the <clears throat> like i would say bethesda's reputation before fallout 76 was here it was like here right and then after it was like here see, see what i'm doing right so before after okay i would say like cd project's reputation was like here and then right now it's like real it's bad it's like below like you can't you know what i mean i feel like it was a higher start before the game released like it was it was at a higher point before the <laughs> cyberpunk came out and now it is the lowest it is so bad unless they're they do have their pc fan base their their personal computer fan base um which honestly they are probably they're kind of like eh, game kill style kind of still works on pc and runs well so like i'm not complaining so like for those people like they're kind of like whatever this is like not a big deal but there's a lot of people that bought the game on consoles and it just is bad <laughs> right they're very mad at them microsoft and sony sony pulled it from the store they've they like have never done that they pulled the game from the store and they're giving refunds to anybody who wants them sony has the worst refund policy the worst that's bad right they are gonna get a there's a civil suit filed against them against cd Projekt from from i think believe investors or some investment people it's just the level at which where they were to where they are right now is horrible they had a they had a talk there was um reports of a company-wide meeting that was held uh after the release of the after basically this past week and you know right before christmas and basically the actual people i, I want to make something clear too like there's a huge difference between the people making the game and the people putting releasing the game right you have the people like developers and uh, developers you program like under the development umbrella you have uh designers and programmers and artists who make things right they make the the parts that go together to make the video game work and you have project managers who are kind of working with them but they're kind of their bosses they're managing those people and they're working with the money hole like with the money people right they're working with the uh producing arm with the uh with the publication arm of cd project right which is kind of a separate thing from the development part so you have the people making the game and then you have the people controlling the people making the game right so during this call <clears throat> one second i need a little bit of water During this call in the studio where they took questions from their employees, the developers, they were like, hey, there were reports that you had said months ago that the game was ready and you're just cleaning up some bugs. You lied. It wasn't ready. Why did we, why did you do that? And they said, <laughs> the response from CD Pro from, you know, the higher ups was, we have made it. We, yes, we made that mistake okay they didn't say like why they did it <laughs> they didn't say like for what reason <laughs> they were like yeah we made a mistake okay that that doesn't help us um there were other things like we had there were other comments from the developers like we had told you this is going to happen for a while um 
you know we we said the game we needed two or three more months that you know this thing wasn't ready this thing wasn't ready we had to cut out features you know why wasn't any of our we heated you know you should have heated our warning why didn't you listen to us and they just said we will listen to the development team better like in the future okay again it's there's this huge power struggle between in in development between the people actually making the thing that you love because they love video games and they want to make it so they commit their life's work to doing it and then the people that make money from those people making video games right like project managers and um <clears throat> and studio management and the and the publication arm of CD project and or any game studio and it is really fucked. Like, I don't know. It's hard for me to look at larger game studios and companies and when they put out stuff like this. And you just know that essentially a lot of the people who really care and like video games that are making the games aren't listened to a lot of times at these bigger studios and on bigger projects. They don't care about what they have to say. And it's just kind of sad, you know, you get, these people have worked for years and they've been crunching for months and months and months. And now all these gamers are like, why do these devs suck? These guys suck shit. What happened? They blow. CD Projekt sucks, right? Their reputation's gone. It's been fucking fucked, right? And they put their whole life's work into doing this shit. They work so hard for so many hours, six day, six days a week. They've been working for the past like four or five months. They've been doing six days a week, right? Like 10, 12 hour days for six days a week for months. And now their game came out and it's bad because it's not ready because they needed more time to make it better because <laughs> they were given an unrealistic release date. I don't know it's like i don't know i i i was listening i was listening to a podcast and they said like i feel like this was inevitable because we kept seeing keep seeing games that release in a uh, a broken state at launch where people are mad like like uh, fallout 76 was very broken at launch right but the hype for fallout 76 was not that high it's an mmo from fallout Eh, people's expectations were a little bit tempered, right? And this is supposed to be like the game this year. People are expecting like Red Dead levels of like perfection and like all these different ways to interact with the open world. And apparently it feels very empty as far as a systems levels kind of design perspective goes. It feels like a kind of bog standard early, you know, like xbox 360 or early gen ps4 open world game there's not that much crazy stuff going on in it systems design wise right that's what i've heard from other designers and people in the industry who i've talked to about it and it's it seems like you know they stripped a lot of the stuff out and but so anyway so on the podcast they were saying this almost seemed inevitable that we would get something that is so desired like the hype for it is here and the result of it is like very broken and bad what's this oh nice amazon got a package delivered sick you know it almost seemed i think it was brad uh, shoemaker who said this on the giant bomb cast was like this was almost inevitable because you just have games uh, coming out that are like broken as fuck and one of them was going to be the game everybody expected to be game of the year everybody in the run up to cyberpunk everybody was like this is going to be this is going to be it this game is going to kick ass um <clears throat> and it was only inevitable that at some point the most hyped game would be the most broken game um and you'd get this huge problem now where like hey sony and xbox need better return policies they need better return policies because developers are you know, publishers are going to force games out when they're not ready. And people are going to be pissed. And this is now an inflection point. This is 100% an inflection point. Where 
now from now going forward if your game is broken and bad people will expect to be able to return it um which wasn't the case on console it wasn't the case at gamestop it wasn't the case at best buy you open that new video game it's yours now dipshit you own it you can sell it back to us no but it's not you can't return it but now game the gamers have been mistreated enough and this has set a precedent that's like hey man if you deliver a product to the market that is so broken that people cannot play it, they got to be able to return it. And so this is now going to change those return. It must. There's going. There's got to be ripples from from this point. Um, yeah, it's. I don't know. It's very. It's wild. It's absolutely like. I feel so bad. I just feel so bad for the people that made the game. And like, you can tell, like I, I have watched gameplay footage of it and there's stuff that you're like, you can see like where it was going or there's moments of like visual brilliance. And there's just stuff that you're like, ah, you can see like the heart that like someone put into doing something. And then like the next second, there's some hilarious fucked up thing or the game just hard crashes at any given moment. You know, and it's just like, oh my god, you know, these all this hard work and these developers are fucking like hanging their heads feeling shame. It's just it's like depressing to me. Um I haven't been reading the chat. I'm still upset that Nintendo for releasing paper on and is promoting violent acts towards paper boys. <laughs> Not okay. <laughs> As a former paper boy, I agree. The Grim Reaper shame on them. Yeah, I would like to call Nintendo out, actually, for releasing um Pokemon with no nude option. Let me see Pikachu's dick. What are you hiding? Show me Pikachu's dick. Okay. Um, I don't know. What are you, like, I'm super interested in that stuff, in this whole nightmare with Cyberpunk, because, um, you know, I, I studied game development, and then I made video games for, like, a year in a big game studio and then I very made a very active decision not to do that anymore and I follow the industry very closely and I have like most of my friends work in game development still uh, out of college a, a good number of them and so I'm super in you know plugged into this shit but like how do you guys like when you see this stuff like what do you think about the cyberpunk thing like, I know that you're probably like, wow, that's wild. But, like, I don't know. What are, Do you guys have any takes on it? Do you guys, like, feel like... I think they could bounce back, but I think it's just going to be, like... They have to fix all the stuff that's broken. And they have to make it all free once it's fixed. Like, it can't be, like, a, you know... <laughs> I mean, they'll patch everything for free, obviously. But, like, maybe they'll put out DLC or something. But they need to, like, really... Some, they need to fix it and get it out, you know in a reasonable time maybe discount the game when it once it's all patched up at a at a discounted price um i don't know it's very interesting to me uh we need to pick somewhere to launch my little dwarf fortress crew i've heard from some people that it's like a pretty good that it's a pretty i mean i've also heard from some people like it's the best game they've ever played and like that seems kind of ridiculous to me um <laughs> But I've also heard from other people that it's a totally serviceable open world game if you're playing on PC. That, you know, if you have a really good PC, it's like totally fine. But whenever like a game that comes out that's like kind of that people say is groundbreaking, I expected it to be like a whole new, you know, open world game that really changed the fucking playing field of open world games. And it seems like even when it's really good, critics who I trust, like Jeff Gersman, um, and people I know who have played it, like, in the industry are like, it's, it's fine. You know, it's a, it's a serviceable open world game, but it's not great. And the bugs give you problems with it. There, there are things that happen in the game. You'll make choices. And then the game doesn't remember those choices that you made. It's like, isn't that the point? <laughs> you know, um, one example is like, you can choose to steal a car or not from this guy and this person had chosen not to steal the car and then later on they called him 
the AI called the guy playing the game in real life uh, and was just like, Hey, you enjoy my car, man? Hope you're getting the most out of my car that you took from me. And he's like, I didn't take it. Like, I made the choice not to steal the guy's car. And uh, that's <laughs> silly. <laughs> right? I don't know. I'm just not like, I don't know. I wish, I wish they gave him another year. You know, it seems like that studio needed another year of time. Because even if they fixed all this stuff that's broken in it, it seems like even the desires, like, structurally for how the game would work just aren't really realized. That there's a lot of, like, meat left on the bone uh, from what people were expecting. So, I don't know. It's just disappointing. And, like, Crunch isn't going to stop happening at that studio now, you know? It's not like because the game is released, like, their days go back to 9 to 5, you know? What happens now is the game is fucked. Investors are mad. The gamer, the gamers. Don't forget the gamers in all of this. The gamers are mad. And now they're going to be crunching post-release to get these patches out because the game is so broken. So it's not like the lives of the people making this game are going to get any materially any better now. They're probably going to keep crunching through February because they have like giant... They said they're like, we have a giant patch planned for like, I think it was around Christmas. I don't know if that hit. And then another one planned for February. And it's like, if you had two large patches planned for the next three months of this development, they knew. This isn't a surprise. They obviously knew. You know, the especially, I mean, of course they, the developers know, but you know, they knew they know about all these issues and they're like it's gonna take this long to fix these problems it's gonna, it's gonna take this long to get this to a place that we are happy with it ah. I don't know